especially if you're in a territory that's that's got a lot of work for you. Um, if you're the, handling the claim, you're the claim owner as a staff adjuster, those, ta those claims have long tails on them and they'll stack, right? So you get your very first week on the job, you get five claims. You're like, yeah, oh, this is pretty easy. I, I can do these, no problem, right? Well, six months in, you still have those five claims and you're still doing stuff on them. You're still getting calls on them. You're still negotiating with contractors. Things are coming up, ALE, whatever. But every week from that first week until six months in, five more, seven more the next week, 12 more the next week, five more. And then they, they're all stacking and stacking and stacking. Pretty soon, you've got 87 pending, right? And it, it becomes almost, I know this because I did it at a carrier, it is harder than being an IA, in my opinion. But it's also a, a really, really great education. Now's a great time to, be, to, be, to go staff because of the opportunities that are available. I mean, they're giving the jobs out like candy. You can get hired, I think, right. just like that. Um, but be prepared to hang in there for a while to get the maximum benefit out of it. Don't try to just go in there for six, go f and sit through the training for the, the two to four months, whatever it takes for them to bring you through their training stuff and then quit. Because they may have given given you a sign on bonus that you will lose if you don't stay there for at least a year, right? Um, you're not going to be vested in the you know the 401ks and all those the pensions and all that stuff, the little the goody benefits that they give you um, at all. You're not going to have get any benefit from that stuff. So yes, I, with a condition. Well, I agree 100 percent that you don't become a staff adjuster if your goal is to become an IA. That's that that'll right right yeah. I, I think if you're i think if you want to become a good ia okay you have to have a lot of variety and a lot of exposure to many different companies um yeah i mean i sure. could work for i mean this year i've worked for i've done claims for at least a dozen different companies this year you know you have to learn how to be flexible gotta be gumby yeah. always yeah. be flexible <laughs> you gotta be stretch armstrong that's it but uh <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it's, you're right. It's, it's when you're going into something that you are not, it's kind of like going into a marriage thinking, oh, this will be great for a few years. You know, well, your ultimate <laughs> right. goal is divorce. You're <laughs> never going to put, you're never going to put a hundred percent into it because you don't plan on being there that long. Okay. It's the same right. thing if you're going to become an, an IA. I mean, if you're going to go in and work for a company with the ultimate goal of becoming an IA, I'm not going to be here that long. Why do I care? You know, you're, you're not going to give it hundred percent. And you know what? And, and let me tell you this, good managers can tell that. Okay. They can tell that you're, Oh yeah. Your numbers will show it. And, and I can tell you as a, you know, working as a field manager for a company, there are some people out there that should never be IAs. Okay. They need to be employees. Yeah. That's, that's their environment. And, and uh, and being a manager, I mean, there's some people that you literally had to tell them where to be every day or how to do their job and and, and, yep. and keep them organized uh, because they just were somehow constitutionally incapable of grasping that they were independents and uh, and they and you had to treat them as employees and you know those people definitely need to become staff you know and those are also the same people that struggle with income those are the same people struggle with getting their work in um, because they just can't without having total structure, they can't handle it, you know? Yeah, those, I, mean, a team. I mean, that's one of the benefits to being a, sta a staff person is that you're also gonna have a team around you that you can right. reach out and touch at all times. Well, and I'll close with this. Um, oh, what was I gonna close with? Oh my no gosh, worries. I just forgot. I, I just brain farted what I was gonna would close with. Hold on, let me think. Adjuster TV bloopers right here. Okay. It was like, th I was just gonna wrap, button it all up. Um, oh, this was it. And I'll just close with this. Um, a person, when I was a staff adjuster, um, and I've heard this from multiple people, not just this guy, so I, I, I feel like there's some, it's like anic data, right? He said, and this was a person who was getting ready to retire from Liberty Mutual. Um, he'd been in with the company since he was in his mid-20s. And in his experience, I think he was like 60, maybe, and getting ready to retire, like with a, with a retire nicely and comfortably. He said in his experience of 40 years or 35 years or whatever it was, that the independent track and the staff track, um, if you run the numbers um, and look at the averages and everything, when it's all said and done, you kind of, he's like, you basically end up in the same place. You just take a little bit different paths to get there. 
right? With the IA side, you might you might front load some of the income, but over time, everything's going to kind of even out. And that was, you know, so the final thing I'll say is, is that going staff is not, a, is not a bad way to go. There's a lot of opportunities on the carrier side. Insurance is a huge industry that's not just like hail damage yep. claims on houses, right? It's, it's a, a myriad of different things. And, you know, so long story short, uh, now's a great time to do it. Like you just said, James, if you want to, if you want to go that way, if, if you're on the fence about whether or not you want to be an IA and there's some things that are just, they're just like sticking you right They're just stopping you from going all in on it. We, we really want people who are all in. And if you're like, well, I don't know the roof thing. I mean, I just, I don't know. Or the, I don't know. I mean, we like to go on long vacations with the family in the summertime. It's, it's, those are things that you're going to have to give up, right? If, if you really want to be like, make the six figures as an IA, it takes sacrificing a lot of the other things that, that you know, that you may not have to sacrifice as a staff person. Yep. Because summertime right. is money-making time. Oh. Yes, summertime is money-making time. That's There's for sure. Time. If you're a brand new adjuster working for a major IA firm, you will most likely already be covered under a blanket errors and emissions policy. And you probably pay $5, $10 per claim for this coverage. What is errors and emissions? If you're accused of messing something up on a claim, your E&O insurance will step, step in and help you out. But what if you cause damage or injury on a field inspection? For example, your ladder falls down and smashes the insured's brand new Ford F-150 Lightning then a general liability policy will cover you. Again, you will likely have a little bit of protection through your IA firm as a newbie adjuster. However, if you've got a year or two under your belt and you make most or all of your annual income from claims work, then you owe it to yourself to upgrade your E&O and GL coverages to be customized to you. And depending on how many claims you run in a year, there's a very good chance these policies will be cheaper for you through Kaplik. Better and cheaper, sign me up. There is only one company that provides E&O and general liability solely to the insurance industry, and that's Kaplik. They even have drone and cyber coverages. Download the free guide all about the different kinds of insurance you as the adjuster should carry at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. Coming up on Adjuster TV. 